In the last video, I looked at identification of training need and what it really is. And one of the things that I uh, emphasized was the need to identify a performance gap. And uh, that the performance gap uh, indicated that there may be an absence of knowledge or skill, or there may be an absence of uh, attitude or motivation or commitment, or it could be a resourcing or a functional issue that's the problem. And I just want to uh, clarify and, uh, and explore that just a fraction more so that we, we understand what it is we're talking about when we talk about developmental need linked to a performance gap. Now what we've got here is a simple graph. Uh, on this axis, it looks at the level of knowledge and skill that the person has got in order to do the job. And high knowledge and skill would mean that they've got what, everything they need to know, uh, and all the physical skills and abilities in order to be able to fulfill that function. And if they had low knowledge and skill, then they wouldn't. And on this axis, what we've got is the appropriate attitude by the individual. There's the appropriate level of commitment, motivation, uh, will to do the job. And again, at this side, they would have low attitude, poor attitude, inappropriate attitude. And at this end, they would have high attitude, appropriate commitment uh, to the function and the role. Now, let's look at these four quadrants that this produces. Somebody who has high knowledge and skill, but does not have the appropriate attitude, in other words, the highly skilled, got high ability, but they don't seem to care, well, the issue there would be, I think, is not a developmental training one, but it would actually be a management issue. That would be something that the management of this person would need to explore and find out why that person is like that, what the challenges is that they've got, what are the problems that they've got, that creates this inappropriate or poor attitude to the work, and then see if that can be addressed. But I think if you just try to throw a development and learning at this person, who has already got the appropriate knowledge and skill, um, you'd be throwing you know, good money after bad, as it would be unlikely to have any impact. Now, um, here what we've got is somebody who's got high, uh, high knowledge um, and high attitude. They've got, they know exactly what the job is, they know how it should be done, uh, they've got um, uh, the appropriate commitment and will, but there's still a problem with performance. Now, in those circumstances, what you are likely to find is this. What you're actually dealing with is a resource or a procedural issue. And, and by that, what I mean is that the person doing the job has uh, everything they need except the appropriate resources. There may be contextual proce uh, procedures that they have to follow that are preventing them performing at the highest or appropriate levels. And so consequently, uh, because of an absence of resources or the incorrect uh, presence of resources, uh, despite the fact that this person has got high knowledge and skill and a you know, really good and positive attitude, they do not fulfill the performance requirements. Once again, putting training into the mix there would uh, result in, well, no change. Again, it would be a, a failure in that sense. Now the third quadrant is where the individual has been uh, recruited or promoted or transferred into a job and um, they are not fulfilling the role or function as we expected. So in other words, this person has been promoted to a job and they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the appropriate attitude and clearly um, there may well be a role or a function for training there, but the real issue is, how come we, re we recruited them or promoted them or transferred them in when there is this issue about attitude that's present? Uh, because with all the will in the world, somebody might have all the knowledge and skill, but if it's not backed up and supported by an appropriate attitude, it's never ever going to be applied. And so consequently, um, in many cases, we will throw training and development in these, uh, into this quadrant. Um, again, 
the person might acquire the knowledge and skill, but all we do is move them up here into a management issue. And really, we need to address attitudinal issues uh, before we start to address, I think, the knowledge and skill issues. Um, or we need to address them simultaneously. And in those circumstances, if we don't do that, if we don't address these attitudinal issues, the, what training is doing is almost trying to paper, paper over uh, the problems that have been created by inappropriate recruitment, inappropriate promotion, or inappropriate transfer from one job to another. Now, the, the principal area where there is a performance gap, and it is this person's got a high attitude, appropriate attitude, a positive attitude, but there is an absence of knowledge and skill. Now that is most definitely um, a development issue. That is something that training and development learning can, can impact on and would be an appropriate action to take. But all too often, the energies and the resources of uh, an HR function that has responsibility for development and learning of the workforce will find a lot of its time, its effort, uh, exhausted in these other areas where, frankly, the impact that it can have is fairly minimal. We need to identify, in all circumstances, is there a performance gap and is it attributable to an absence of knowledge and skill. And if we can do that, we can safely say that is a development issue which the HR department, the training department, you know, whatever you call it, uh, that has responsibility for that function and role can actually do something about.